Suzuki community. I um, I don't know what to say. Last time I did a video like this, I had a gentleman call me and tell me he wished that I didn't do this. But I am um, going to do this. I'm just not going to do it the way I did last time. I'm not going to show you how to do an OBD2 harness. I'm just going to show you what's left over. Uh, the last video that I did, there's like 50,000 views. I did it years ago. We lost ownership of it, and but I, I, I got it back. But that's not the point. The point was is that a lot of people uh, thought that that video would hurt my business. It actually helped my business quite a bit because people were happy that I showed them what to do, but then they saw there was a little bit more complicated than what they wanted, and because of my fair pricing, they just sent me a lot of harnesses to do. And so uh, I am going to continue to still do harnesses, and what we have here is a 1997. Now I can tell it's a 1997 because I ended up with three blue connectors. Now there is a fourth connector, but it's for an automatic transmission. So I'm going to be blunt. I don't do automatic transmissions. I will tell you right now that TrailTough.com, they're experts at doing the automatic transmissions. There's a few other people in the United States um, that also have companies that do it, but TrailTough kind of is the company to go to for that. So there were four blue and I took the automatic transmission out because it's going in a Samurai with the manual transmission. I don't do autos like that. Okay, so here we go. What is left over? That's how I'm going to do this. We've got the two connectors, the black and white, that are going to go out to the engine. Those need to be modified too. I'm not showing you that today. Uh, just have to pull wires out of it more than anything else. So you've got your two black firewall connectors, one black, one white. This is going to run your injectors, it's going to run your IAC, it's going to run your TPS and things like that. You've got to have your noise filter. That's definitely a no-no not to get rid of this. This is what makes the spark. You're going to have the 102 sensor, your primary, where you have eliminated the second O2 sensor. Now at this point I would like to mention that you could have a check engine light if this donor car was a manual transmission. There are some things you could have done to put in the fuel tank pressure sensor, the second O2 sensor, the advanced charcoal canister system. You could have put that stuff in and then you could have a clean check engine light which means it comes on, start the motor, it goes out. There's no code. On an OBD2, it doesn't flash codes like the OBD1s do. You can't use the paper clip. Yes, I have the DTC here with all of its wires, but I'm only using the blue-red for freeze timing. I don't use anything else there. So we do keep the diagnostic trouble code connector right there, the DTC. We obviously need the fuel pump relay and the main relay, so those stay in the harness. The three computer connections. The OBD2 connector. How do you know it's an OBD2? It has slanted sides. The OBD1 has got square sides. So when I see this, uh, you know you can buy a $50 scanner and plug it in there and it'll work. I'm not going to show you any magic today on what I do with the fuse block, but I don't like to leave a wire for you with a fuse and say hook it up to something. And that's because the Samurai fuse block is already overloaded. I've talked about this quite often. And so what I do is I mount this fuse block by mount by soldering the big wires into the old Samurai fuse block uh, right into the bus bar so that I can add more power and also relieve the Samurai fuse block from uh, its overuse of power. Obviously your ground wires have to stay in and then you end up with your map and your EGR uh, temp sensor. Now the EGR is green with the red stripe, your map is three wires. This is the only vacuum switch that's also electrical so it's easy to find the manifold absolute pressure. And this particular guy right here, this was going to be for the advanced charcoal canister system so I'm going to eliminate him. So as you can see these harnesses are super simple. Now coming out of your white and black connector is going to be your things like your distributor, the seven wire connector, uh, it's going to have your EGR and it's going to have each injector individually. That's, that's why there's so many wires in these plugs. You wouldn't have this in OBD1, these two square plugs. Your power steering wire, I never cut these out of a harness because you never know, you might use a sidekick pump. I don't like them, but you might use it so I don't cut it out. And then of course you've got your air temp sensor and you've got your mass airflow. So your mass airflow, your air temp sensor, those have to stay in there. So, 
I didn't really show you how to do it. I just showed you what's left. Maybe you can figure it out. If you can't, give me a call. Send me the harness. Go wheeling. Be safe. Have fun. And uh, please subscribe to the channel. We love you here at Zooks Off-Road. We appreciate all your business. Have a good day. Bye.